Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. <laughs> What's up, Shaq Houses? How you doing? It's your boy Shaq House here. Hope your week went well. Uh, mine's going pretty good. It's a bright, sunshining day today. It is. It really is, actually. But it's getting colder outside, but that's just the way I like it. But I hope around my area that we have a cold winter this year. The kind that we get a lot of snow and it keeps us from leaving the house. That's the kind of winter I want. Not this lukewarm proof of, gold, gl proof of global warming nonsense. But that aside, what have I got for you today? I'm gonna be redoing the first video that I ever published for this channel. That's right. I'm gonna be redoing the 3D Man. Now that I'm more proficient in what I'm doing, I wanted to do that one over again. And in light of all the other YouTube videos that have taken on this character, it's, I'm gonna show y'all up. That's what I'm doing, I'm gonna show y'all up. All those other YouTube videos that did something on the character with their monotone voices and leaving out the facts. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Let me show you how it's done, all right? We're gonna be doing the 3D Man over again. Yeah, that's right, he's called the 3D Man. He's a very obscure Marvel character. And considering that he had only six appearances before he was brought back during the third run of Avengers back in the late 90s, this video is also going to cover the characters and events that were established and introduced into the character's retconned history. But first, let's just start off with the original history of the 3D Man. Check it out! The 3D Man is actually Charles Chandler and his younger brother, Harold Chandler, Chuck and Hal. There is a certain dichotomy between the brothers. Chuck, he was your all-American talented football player and expert test pilot. Hal. He was an experienced scientific researcher who requires eyeglasses and crutches to walk due to being astigmatic and a polio affliction during his childhood. But Hal, he never resented his older brother. He looked up to him and they shared a strong affectionate bond. While testing an experimental XF-13 rocket in 1958, Chuck was kidnapped by a passing starship of the shape-shifting alien Skrulls, which came to Earth on a mission of reconnaissance and conquer as they wanted to learn more about Earth's fledgling space programs. Of course, with this being the 1950s, Chuck, he put the Skrulls in the same category as those pesky communist Russians. Taking back command of his rocket ship, Chuck fought his way out of the larger Skrull starship, causing it to explode. Though Chuck wasn't at a distance to be struck by debris, the energies from the Skrull ship's power source and experimental power source have burst outwards and irradiated Chuck, permeating him with its energies. He crashed his ship in a field in the Mojave Desert near where he knew his brother Hal would be, but the energies from the Skrull ship caused him to split into two identical beams, one completely red and one completely green. As the two Chucks ran towards Hal, they converted into energy and disappeared in a flash of light. Chuck was thought to be dead, but Hal came to discover the two Chucks ended up superimposed on his glasses as two-dimensional twin images imprinted on them, creating a very special set of red and green glasses for Hal, similar to the movie 3D glasses that they had during that time. Hal also discovered that by focusing on the images of his brother in the glasses and emerging, he would slip into a trance so that Chuck's energy body would be reconstructed into material form back in three-dimensional reality, a blending of his red and green halves. Calling himself the 3D Man, he became a crime fighter in the late 1950s. He clashed with many scrawls, but after an incident with Hal occupying the 3D Man's body, Hal decided to never release the 3D Man ever again. Now the character's first appearance in the modern Marvel era was in the Incredible Hulk issue number 251. At this point, Hal Chandler was a middle-aged adult and he married Chuck's old girlfriend, Peggy, with whom he had two children of their own, Hal Jr. and Chuck II. Long story short, Bruce Banner was on the run and Hal let him stay in his home, but decided to release a 3D man for the first time after 20 plus years after recognizing that Banner was wanted by authorities as the Hulk. After a brief misunderstanding, not to mention being hopelessly outpowered by the Hulk, the 3D man returned to his brother's glasses, 
not wanting to return to three-dimensional reality after learning that Hal had kept him as a secret from his family for over 20 years. Though he was somehow summoned by the Grandmaster in Marvel Super Heroes Contest of the Champions, it would be nearly 20 years before the 3D Man and the Chandlers would be in publication again. Now we'll talk about what the 3D Man can do in a second, but first, a commercial break. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey, do you like crime dramas, crime stories? Then check out these two novels by author Derek Scarzella. Mr. Scarzella, he's a writer that lives in the Washington, D.C. area with his family, and he holds a degree in English and literature from the University of Maryland. Though currently working on a slew of new projects across different genres, he's written these two novels, The Vicious Game and Knuckle Crack Bone. Though both novels are unrelated, their crime stories were plots circa the mid-2000s, centering on D.C. area youth, the choices they make, and the epic conclusion of those choices. Both novels are on Amazon and are available in paperback and Kindle. Check out the links in the description and feel free to get yourself some copies. The 3D Man is a combination of two originally baseline human brothers, Chuck and Hal Chandler. Chuck existed on a set of red and green 3D glasses with his twin images imprinted on them. Hal came to discover that by focusing on the images of his brother in the glasses and emerging on a flat surface, he would slip into a trance-like state as he initiated a dimensional transfer so that Chuck's energy body would be reconstructed into material form in three-dimensional reality, a blending of his red and green halves. As the 3D man, he possessed three times his previous athlete levels of strength, speed, agility, endurance, reflexes, vision, hearing, durability, recuperative powers, etc. His strength and speed were around lifting 600 pounds and running at about 60 miles per hour, respectively. He also had the ability to visually perceive scrolls in their true form, no matter what shape they'd taken so long as he was looking directly at them, i.e. not on a monitor screen or through image enhancement equipment. At the time of his origin, Chuck wore a specially designed temperature-regulating NASA full-body flight suit that took on a red and green color scheme and bonded to his skin when he was exposed to the energies of the scrawl ship's power source. The glasses upon which his images were imprinted were an artificial portal to a two-dimensional reality where he resided when not manifested in a three-dimensional plane. The 3D man's form could only exist in the material world for three hours before he would disintegrate into his two-dimensional component images and return through the portal. By concentrating on the images on his glasses, Hal Chandler mentally initiated the dimensional transfer that brought the three-dimensional man, I'm sorry, the 3D man into reality. Chuck Chandler himself could not initiate the process, though it appeared he could initiate the return to his two-dimensional reality at will, where he experienced some awareness. Originally, the 3D Man was piloted by the mind of Chuck Chandler, but later on, Hal would also operate and control the 3D Man as well. Whenever Chuck was active, he was fully aware of what Hal had been experiencing while Chuck was dormant, and likewise, Hal remembered everything Chuck did when he was the 3D Man. As the years passed, Hal became an old man, even though he and his wife aged more slowly thanks to long-term exposure to the energies that created the 3D man, who was still young and vital when called upon. However, the effort to do so was more and more draining on Hal's elderly body, so he did so quite rarely. Some fun facts. This character, even within universe, is so obscure that other superheroes don't even recognize or remember him. And though the character evokes feelings of mockery and laughter with his gimmick, and by that I mean his costume's bichromatic Christmas-colored theme, which is an obvious nod to the stereoscopic 3D glasses used in films from the 1950s, his co-creator, writer Roy Thomas, created him as something of a homage. A homage to Captain 3D, a Jack Kirby slash Joe Simon creation whose powers were certainly an inspiration for the 3D man. And Roy Thomas, he actually did intend this character to debut in a 3D presentation, given the number of graphical elements displayed in his first story arc in Marvel Premiere. However, Marvel's budget wouldn't cover the cost of even one issue presented in 3D, so the idea was scrapped. The 3D Man first appeared in Marvel Premiere issue number 35. 
You see, during the 1970s, there was a period where writer Roy Thomas was exploring the forgotten characters of the 1950s, such as Marvel Boy, The Wizard, and Miss America, all of whom were around before the modern Marvel era. And by that I mean before the Fantastic Four debuted in their first issue back in 1961. So the 3D Man, he's essentially a retcon character created by Roy Thomas for that era. And considering the character's origins involve the Skrulls, an MCU secret invasion appearance, or at least an Easter egg, would have been a hell of a lot more satisfying than how the series, by that I mean the book and the TV series, turned out. Both of them sucked. Also, another thing I want to talk about, when Chuck wasn't operating as a 3D man, he resided in a two-dimensional reality that appeared on his brother's glasses. I think of it like that film Flatland, where all these flat surface characters, all these flattened characters, they could only move in one direction, back and forth, left and right. They had no concept of up and down. Also, I think that Chuck, Chuck is just semi-sentient energy, semi-dormant energy that inhabited his brother is what happened to him when he was transformed into the 3D man. And the glasses, they could have been just a psychological crutch, a placebo used by the brothers since they didn't understand what really happened to them. The 3D Man was returned from relative obscurity for a long-running storyline during the third volume of Marvel's Avengers, which debuted in 1998. Kurt Busiek's run on that title at the time brought the character back and heavily retconned his origins. Busiek's storyline involved a cult-like organization called the Triune Understanding. And the most damning visual of the Triunes is their symbol, their logo. It's the same triple triangle that the 3D man wore on the center of his costume. But why do the Triune understanding wear it? Well, the answer lies with their founder, Jonathan Tremont, and something called the Trion. The what? Eons ago, a group of three extra-dimensional entities known as the Trion were the supreme beings of their universe, as well as its underlying substance. To protect their realm, they realized that they had to purge all evil from their beings. So the Trion successfully imprisoned their capacity for all evil into an ebony-colored sphere. However, this caused their reality to remain stagnant, without growth and development. But beyond that, a tiny fragment of that sphere entered a ripped in reality and entered the 616 universe, where it drifted through galaxies and space for countless millennia as a thing of pure malevolence. Taking the shape of an ebony pyramid, this triple evil, as it came to be called, overwhelmed and assimilated spacefaring beings, armies, planets, and even interstellar empires. The bodies of its fallen foes were reanimated as zombies for the triple evil, while technology taken by the triple evil was incorporated into its structure, expanding its pyramid into an immense organic machine-like complex. The triple evil also absorbed the life energy of the many people that it destroyed outright, amassing a limitless power source, near limitless power source. Realizing how badly they had erred, the Trion released three small pyramid-shaped shards of pure goodness into the 616 universe to seek out and defeat the triple evil. These shards would grant great power to champions in order to combat the threat. The threefold threeness of the Trion shards requires three people to wield them. And like the triple evil itself, these shards drifted through space and galaxies for untold ages. One shard was found by an unnamed alien. This unnamed champion was of extraterrestrial origin and presumably a Chimelian by his appearance. You know, the Chimelians, the extraterrestrial aliens that granted powers to the quartet of siblings that became the Power Pack. Empowered by the first Trion Shard, he tried to defeat the Triple Evil on his own, only to be consumed by it along with his Shard. The Shard appeared to grant him energy manipulation abilities that could be used offensively. The second Shard was found by the Skrulls in their native Andromeda galaxy and was, and was used to power an experimental star drive that ultimately bestowed powers on two Earth humans, Hal and Chuck Chandler, so that they could merge into the superhero known as the 3D Man during the late 1950s. The third shard came to Earth directly and landed in the Himalayan mountains, where its energies affected three young brothers living in a nearby village in Naga Hills, India. They gained fledgling powers, 
one became superhumanly strong, the middle child gained superhuman intelligence, while the youngest became a gifted orator, able to charm others with his words. However, an illness eventually swept the entire village, and it killed the two oldest brothers. However, their spirits lived on through their youngest brother. And as an adult, that younger brother began having prophetic dreams about that shard, but he could not locate it himself. Meanwhile, Hal Chandler, now an elderly man with adult children of his own, he also experienced dreams about the shard and came to India to investigate. The Indian man signed on as, as his guide and helped Hal Chandler find the shard and then he struck him down from behind and imprisoned him. Uncovering the shard in the Himalayan mountains and mastering it through study and meditation allowed this man to become a superhuman. Sensing the history and impending danger of the triple evil, this Indian man traveled to America, legally changed his name to Jonathan Tremont, and founded the Triune Understanding eight months after Hal Chandler disappeared. Now the Triune Understanding, they were a philosophical movement that preached the fulfillment of one's innate potential through balancing three aspects of the self, the mind, the body, and the soul, with the environment. The organization started out small, operating out of storefronts and church basements, and they even rented out meeting halls to congregate. But their gradual growth led some to dismiss them as a cult or a fad. But the organization continued to persevere, becoming large enough to build their own world headquarters in Texas. Now the organization's logo was the 3D man's triangular chess symbol, which means many things at this point. One, the three members of the Trion. Two, the triple evil. Three, the threefold threeness of the Trion shards. Four, the triune's preaching of triple balance. Five, a nod to Tremont's selfish desire for all three shards for himself. Or five, it was just a logo for Chuck Chandler's Nassau spacesuit that got transformed right along with him. But anyway, as the Triune Understanding followers grew, so did Tremont's own power as he drew energy from them into himself. Though he claimed to help many of his followers, Tremont was really a power-hungry narcissist and he created the Triune Understanding with the sole purpose of amassing enough power for himself to defeat the triple evil upon its arrival on Earth. However, his biggest success among all of his followers was a young man named Delroy Garrett Jr. A disgraced Olympic gold medal winner who was exposed as a steroid user, Garrett was stripped of his medals and became jobless, dejected, and felt unwelcome until he joined the Triune Understanding for direction and aim. Now, Jonathan Tremont, he sensed that Delroy had a spirit matching that of Hal Chandler, and though Tremont somewhat fed upon the Trion energies that empowered Hal Chandler, he could not usurp it outright. But seeking more recruits to empower him, Tremont's plan to do so involved using Delroy to house Hal Chandler's Trion energy. The Triunes, they taught the skeptical Delroy to let go of his anger that he had for himself and had him undergo an experiment that they claimed would unlock Delroy's true inner power. Tremont, he arranged for a process that converted Hal Chandler's body completely into Trion energy and transferred it into Garrett. Deceived into thinking that the Triune understanding had unlocked his innate superhuman potential, Garrett became both a Triune spokesperson and a costume superhero calling himself Triathlon. But the energies empowering him were later revealed to contain the minds of both Chandler brothers. It also should be noted that when Chuck Chandler was a 3D man, he basically became Captain America. But Delroy Garrett Jr., he's an Olympic level athlete, already the peak of human physical perfection like Captain America. So when he became triathlon with the powers of the 3D man, he basically, he basically became Captain America times three. In the final battle with the triple evil, triathlon absorbed all the Trion shards from Tremont and from the alien hero whose corpse and first shard were entombed within the Triple Evil's pyramid. Now mind you, one shard is not enough to defeat the Triple Evil. All three shards are needed, and their threefold threeness requires three people to wield them. This caused Delroy and the souls of the 3D Man and Hal Chandler to become a new trinity, possessing vast amounts of mystical power. Working in tandem as a threefold being, they defeated the triple evil and took control over its pyramid. 
The full range of their combined power was not revealed, especially since much of what they did could have been accomplished solely by manipulating the pyramid's powers. But they eventually split, with Triathlon regaining his regular power levels, Hal Chandler returning to human, and Chuck Chandler also becoming human as well, for the first time in over 50 years, having not aged since the day since his transformation. Now Delroy, he became the new 3D man with the blessing and approval of the Chandler brothers. However, the last time Chuck and Hal were seen, they were attacked but left alive. Hal was in a coma, and Chuck is left with motor impairment. All right, let's talk about the characters that we talked about in this retcon history. Triathlon. Delroy Garrett Jr. was originally a baseline human who underwent a process that transferred all of the converted Treon energies of Hal and Chuck Chandler into himself, effectively granting him the powers of the 3D man. Already an Olympic triathlete, as triathlon, Delroy possessed three times the uppermost limits of peak human physical ability. He could lift roughly a ton and a quarter or a ton and a half tons at most and run just over 100 miles per hour, in addition to possessing triple enhanced agility, endurance, stamina, reaction time, durability, vision, hearing, recuperative capabilities, etc. When channeling his body's Treon energy into his eyes, they would glow red and green respectively and enable him to visually perceive and identify any extraterrestrial shape-shifting scrawls in his environment no matter how they disguise themselves. The Treon energy transferred into Delroy at the time of his transformation was later revealed to contain the minds of both Hal and Chuck Chandler. While wielding all three of the Treon shards against the triple evil, Triathlon and the Chandler brothers existed in this state as three constantly energized and floating beings, and they were presumably capable of surviving in the vacuum of space and could project, store, absorb, and manipulate energy in a variety of ways. They eventually split, with Triathlon retaining his 3D man power levels. But later, Delroy took the name and costume of the 3D man with the approval from the Chandler brothers. Some fun facts. Triathlon, he's a black kid from the slums of Philly who earned himself an athletic college scholarship and landed on the US track and field Olympics team where he won three gold medals. He had fame, fortune, and endorsements, all of which came to a crashing end when he tested positive for steroid usage. Stripped of his medals and down on his luck, he joined the pop psychology movement where he got superpowers and became their celebrity spokesperson. Delroy, after defeating the triple evil, he didn't return to the triune understanding following Tremont's death, after which apparently the organization dissolved. But in the 2010 Atlas series, Delroy was forced to go on the run after the Chandler brothers were attacked but left alive. He was also an Avenger at one point as well too, but wary of his fellow Avengers and resenting the circumstances of his recruitment, i.e. he looked at himself as an affirmative action hire, Garrett, he was at first bitter and disruptive within the group, but he gradually became a valued and enthusiastic member. He later joined the covert superhero team known as the Agents of Atlas, bringing full circle to a story from the first volume of What If back in the 1970s, which involved a now eradicated branching timeline in which the Agents of Atlas were known as the Avengers back in the 1950s and included a variant of the Chuck Chandler 3D man among their ranks. But Triathlon, he's worthy of a Disney Plus MCU series at least. I mean, given his background, a black kid from the streets of Philly who works to attain, works to attain all the success and has it, has it all end, then becomes a spokesperson, a spokesperson for Scientology and gains true character. I mean, that makes for a good Disney Plus story. I mean, they already got Kamala Khan over across the river in Jersey for Miss Marvel. So why not triathlon, Marvel? Come on. Next, Jonathan Tremont. The man who became Jonathan Tremont was originally a baseline human who was exposed to the energies of a Treon shard during his childhood, which made him remarkably charismatic and persuasive. Gaining the shard itself during adulthood, 
Tremont developed the ability to absorb psionic energy from various sources, primarily from other living beings, and metabolize and desaturate his body with various superhuman powers, though not all of them were fully defined and cataloged. He possessed the power of suggestion, which he could use to influence people's behavior and thoughts and actions subtly, either over a distance or in person, such as when he gave his speeches for the triune understanding. He manifested different aspects of telepathy, such as the power to transfer his mind to the astral plane for meditation or to commune with his brothers. He could also send the minds of other people into a psychic landscape of their own devising, allowing them to literally face their own psychological problems and issues face on. Tremont seemed to absorb powers from his followers, feeding off of their psychic energies and devotion to the triune understanding. When charged by these energies, he seemed to be capable of levitation, projecting energy blasts, size alteration, teleportation, and many other feats as well. But chiefly though, Tremont's most significant ability is the power to summon his brothers and their more fully developed superhuman identities as Pagan and Lord Templar. Pagan is a massive physical specimen, normally standing at least nine feet tall. He has class 100 strength, superhuman endurance, reaction time, and is all but impervious to any form of physical injury. Pagan is constantly revitalized by Treon energy, which can increase his size and strength even further if he wills it. He also seemed to be able to absorb different types of energy when exposed to them, decreasing the amount of punishment that he could endure even more. Lord Templar's primary ability was to summon what was called the Avatars of Templar, energy duplicates which acted as slightly different versions of himself. Among his avatars were ones that were superhumanly strong, superhumanly agile, capable of morphing their hands into sword-like blades, projecting high-voltage electricity, energy siphoning abilities, and becoming intangible. He could summon six different avatars, or six of one type, such as all avatars of superhuman strength, for example. Lord Templar himself was capable of teleportation, he levitated himself constantly, and could produce repulsion energy either as beams from his hands or as a surge of energy blasting from out of his body. Whether we saw all of his possible avatars, or if he could also personally possess the abilities that they did is unknown. Some fun facts. Jonathan Tremont. Even his name is egotistical, Jonathan meaning gift of God and Tremont meaning three mountains. He's a shady Indian man with an Anglo sounding name who founded a cult-like organization called the Triune Understanding. Now the Triune Movement, that, that shit has Scientology written all over it. Even though Kurt Busiek, he claims that he had no prior knowledge of Scientology at the time and just wanted to create an Avengers story with the backdrop of a pop psychology religious movement. And for all his talk, Jonathan Tremont, he was a control-seeking, power-hungry narcissist. He had little regard for his followers and regarded them as sheep from whom he could obtain money and, more importantly, personal power. He regarded himself as something of a triple man, a three-in-one, uniquely suited to control all three Treon shards and combat the triple evil himself. During the time of the final battle, he killed some of his followers and his brothers to fuel his power, but it was all for naught. I mean, look right here. Look how sad he was when Triathlon and the Chandler brothers did the job for him. Ha ha! However, his final action, breaching the force field surrounding Kang the Conqueror's base, allowed the Avengers to win during the Kang Dynasty storyline. Yeah, Jonathan Tremont, he died in sacrifice, even if it was just for his own narcissism. Also, he was not above using smear campaigns against the Avengers. He tried to paint them as religiously intolerant and racially biased in an attempt to win more sympathy and recruitment for the Triunes, many of whom, many members of which were visible minorities. It kind of reminds me of the Jim Jones cult. Next. The Triple Evil. The Triple Evil, named so, well, because the writers couldn't think of anything less silly, and because of the three entities who created it, is a living entity of pure malevolence. It began as a tiny ebony pyramid, but eventually swallowed entire populations and inanimate matter until it expanded into an immense organic machine-like pyramid. 
The triple evil also absorbed the life energy of the many people that it outright destroyed, amassing a near limitless power source. And it was also capable of nearly infinite feats. For example, it could travel as fast as Quasar or the Living Lightning, fire incredibly powerful energy blasts, and repair and rebuild itself almost immediately after any damage. It could also project a hologram of a user at many times the user's size. And one of its biggest abilities was its ability to corrupt the souls of others and then absorb them into itself. It bombarded resistance against it with illusions of their fondest dreams and then corrupted them with it. Some fun facts. The Triple Evil's arrival near Earth coincided with the events of the Kang Dynasty storyline. And considering the Kang Dynasty storyline is next in line for the Avengers movies in the MCU, we may or may not get an Easter egg of the Triple Evil or the 3D Man. But that aside, I just have a few questions. If the Treon are supposed to be that powerful, then how did they fuck up this badly? They should have destroyed their collective evil instead of basically sealing it in a jar, a weak jar as it turned out to be. And Jonathan Tremont, for all his ego, thought he was the only person to combat the triple evil, but he was wrong. Because Triathlon, along with the Chandler brothers, they later combined all three shards and destroyed the triple evil for good and all, and it has not been seen since the storyline. Alright Shackhousers, that's what I got for you this week. For next week, I'm actually telling you right now what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be redoing another video. The video I did for the Time Variance Authority two years ago, I'm going to be redoing that after the season two of, after the season two ending of Loki is finished. So tune in then. Hope you have a good week. Later. Mansion, apartment. Shack house. Yes! Yeah. <laughs>